to give credit to and kind of shout him out is obviously my guy here from the UK, who also allegedly happens to be from the same borough that I'm from here in London as well, um, in Newham. Um, he says, or what, he is got booked for Rolling Loud and he goes by the name of Lancey Foe. I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with him. And he performed pretty early, it looked like, and it gave him a bit of a short set. According to the video, officially from the Rolling Loud channel, it's only like a seven-minute video. And I'm not too sure if that was a seven-minute set or they only recorded seven minutes of it or did Lancey Foe get there too late and he only has seven minutes. But regardless, if they did give him a short set of only seven minutes because he's not that well-known and they want him to kind of, you know, build up his rep America in, in, in the States before he kind of gets given a bigger show fair play but I still think he did an amazing job for the seven minutes he was given he absolutely smashed it and I'm going to play a quick clip of him performing at Rolling Loud now Lancey Foe 2023 at Rolling Loud this was pretty good Los Angeles make some fucking noise for yourself ah you in front I'm going to summer heavy get summer heavy Whoa! Moon in front. I got a sun behind me. Moon in front. Sun behind me. Moon in front. Sun behind me. Sun behind me. This time. I got that pure dope. Got in the coat. Pure slow. I do. And look at the stage, right? Look at the crowd. So this is pretty early in the day. You, this, this, this is what I think. This is where you really earn your chops as a performer. You have to perform in front of these crowds that don't really know you. Because again, Rolling Loud is a kind of a two-edged sword, right? In one side, it's good because you get to. It's like a catchment area. All the kids that you should be trying to perform in front of to become new fans of yours, they are there. But there's also all the kids in all the world that are there. It's like too many of them. So it's hard to kind of judge or to get an idea on like who your fans are because loads of them are there and you don't know if they're there to see you and whatever it may be. And some of them might know, might not know you from a lick of paint. So you're having to perform in front of them, get to kind of, you know, show, show who you want to be. But then also if you're performing early, you're looking out into this flipping, you know, parking lot, car park, and it's basically empty right it's full in the front but you look out and you see loads of space everywhere it can maybe bum you out a little bit like you know what oh, man i wish i was bigger i wish people knew me more i wish i was da -da -da, all that sort of stuff get in your own head but i think the key to performing like i did i'm giving myself a pat on the back here because it's my channel do what i want so <laughs> i'm gonna give us a pat on the back what i used to give myself credit for is that even when i used to dj at these little local bars and pubs in the area that I live in, just to kind of get some experiences to play in front of an audience. The one thing that I always love to do, and it's something I was kind of religious about doing, religious about doing, was to always perform, always, 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 always perform to the max level, even if it was just a pub. Like, it doesn't mean I'm playing flipping hard techno, but I'm really giving it my all. Like, I would, I even went as far as saying, when I used to perform or play in these pubs, the bars and pubs, I never played the same set twice, ever. And this was because of, I had one bad experience playing at the other bar one time. And um, one girl that I knew, who's kind of a part of our social circle, she said once, oh, is that the song you played last week or something, right? She noticed some song, I guess she didn't really like it. And it kind of stuck with me. I was like, you know what? Yeah, let me just put, let me put my effort in this. And even though I'm doing an, an early set where no one's going to see me, I should be actually trying to make sure that I'm actively, um, you know, going out listening to new songs putting a new set together and performing like i'm playing at the o2 or something even if i'm performing in a pub where people are legitimately eating burgers in front of me right um they're eating hot wings and shit they're dipping their fries in ketchup they don't care that i'm there at all but i'm in the booth like giving it everything you know what i mean like i'm playing in a fucking madison square garden and i think it's a really good habit to get into because once you then eventually do become big and you do become you do end up kind of fulfilling your potential or being everything you hope to be, those habits are still there. You're not suddenly didn't have to turn it on when you get into, you know, a sold out arena. Now you start off performing like that, like a G from minute zero. And I absolutely love that. So big up Lancey Foe for performing and being professional. Okay, I'm 
bro. So we check the you. Try to get sex when you trap in the pool, but I can't take you. I'm in that kind of good, that thing, I'm bad, it's a career to cool. Come on, I might spit one lyric. Come on, I made it up. Someone got it. Grand thing, and somebody saying it's us. Anyway, you get the point. So he did he did well. Big up Lancey Fo. And there's some parts in there you should check out. Definitely re recommend you check it out. One of my favourites, Lancey Fo. Got a, a really extensive catalogue of tracks to listen to. Um, I do like that now in person when you see him live in the daylight. Because I guess I've seen only clips of him performing, you know, in really dark, uh, you know, clubs and arenas and stuff that he, when he performs here in the UK. Uh, he does look like a really wham version of Fugger, isn't it? But he does look different. I think when you see him on pictures, he looks more like, you know, he's got this whole Playboy Carty Fugger thing going on. But when you actually see him moving around, he looks like his own person. But one thing I do like about Lancey Fo, even though they've all kind of occupied the same sort of like stylistic, you know, aesthetic sort of choices, because it's kind of like what kids wearing nowadays, right? They're all into flipping, wearing black. They're all wearing Rick Owings. They're all wearing, you know, they all have their particular hair braided a certain way. It's just a thing. So it's not that bad. But what I like about Lancey Fo over the last few years, personally for me, what I like about him is that he's now become his own artist, like sound-wise. Like, I don't think you listen to a Lancey Fo album and actually be mistaken and think it's a Carti album or a Fugger album. I think now he actually sounds like Lancey Fo. And I think that's a big, big, big shift in like the last few years I've kind of heard from him. So big up Lancey Fo for that. And again, I've, I think that kind of takes, again, takes time um, to do so. But I think he's growing, learning and coming into his own. And I'm happy and glad to see it.